How's it going, guys? Welcome to the top four feature match of the recent uh, string of feature matches that have gone up on the channel. I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying them so far. I uh, don't have the top eight match. Well, I mean, I do, um, but it was a very, very short match, a blowout. Uh, I was actually in the top eight. I played against Salmon Great. I OTK'd him game one through a minimal board. Uh, set up and then game game two he just scooped immediately because of a bad hand so we're skipping ahead to top four where i will win the die roll luckily and then allow me to uh be able to choose to go first and i actually start by normal summoning graph and uh special summoning farfa so like a very optimal opening if you think about it um this is one of the cases where opening bas is actually not bad because i have another ba in hand to pair with it uh, as the additional level 3 extender and then i'm just already getting my graph to the graveyard which allows me to use my cherubini for other things um uh, whether it be like in this case libic uh you know using it to special summon the edge of sabers from my hand then you know following up with the psychic tracker of course cherubini providing the protection for the seer and all bas alike uh, or anything that it points to rather so uh rather poor mills off of that dante uh just two dangers and a tour guide i believe so Gonna have to summon the Gigantes in my hand and go right into Saryuja. Unfortunately, I only have one in, one in hand by the time the Saryuja resolves. Usually, like to have two or three, uh, you know, to allow you to get the most out of your hand. But I end up seeing Foolish Burial, uh, which is nice, and uh, two Mathman and a Gizmac, which is really rough. So, obviously, I'm putting back the Seer because that is doing nothing in my hand. Um, I'm debating on keeping the the Mathematician, like one of them, but I'm also Thinking if I keep this Gizmac, I can use it to get me a little farther on into my turn. Because right now I'm sort of checking, like, can I use Saryuja to special summon Gizmac? I wanted to make sure there was no sort of claws that I was missing. Um, but you can. You can definitely use Saryuja to summon the Gizmac by, you know, its special summon effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that will get it on board as an extender and then, you know, be able to use its graveyard effect later on. So now I'm using Foolish Burial here. Debating on what to send. You obviously can send any monster in the deck. There's a lot of choices. This time I go for the, uh, the Dodgescaper. So that'll bring itself out immediately. At this point, I believe I only have one Earth Engrave. And that is the Gigantes. So that'll get another Earth Engrave as well. Saryuja Special Summons the Gizmec. And then we're going to link off here into our second Saryuja. Now this is well, hopefully where we'll see a Block Dragon. Because we've yet to see one this entire game, right? So we want to see that Block Dragon as soon as possible that's why we're playing three and i'm drawing in a two mathematician again this is this is absolutely absurd um but uh, i guess it is what it is uh but i find the leonis and a glow bulb which is great so like i'll special summon the leonis for free uh, and then use uh sorry user rather to get the glow bulb out and then i'm just going to use all those to go into curious uh so it ends up you know working out pretty well Still no block dragon, so I have to use the Curious here to get the block dragon to the graveyard and mill three on top of that. I didn't get a Shudo, a Mathman, uh, which is great. Um, obviously an Earth, the Jackalope really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so now at this point, the full combo is pretty much aborted at this point, unless I find a Pot of Avarice in my hand. Then I can make another Saryuja, but um, I really kind of have to uh, improvise at this point if I really want to get a good end board. Uh, so I use Glow Bulb here, and then I use Destrudo um, to be able to target the Glow Bulb to take half of my life points away to be able to summon it. And go for the Nightmare Cerberus. This, of course, is for an Earth target. I'm also trying to see how I could possibly set up an Avermax or an Appalooza. Since I, I have a pretty good idea at this point, this late in the tournament, that I know what my opponent is playing. playing. So I'm pretty sure he's playing Orcus at this point. Um, at least that I know from, you know, like I said, this is top four. We played four rounds of Swiss, a top eight, top four. Um, so I know what I'm playing against. Uh, so I use the other Gigantes as an extender, obviously, to get into the Nat Beast. So that already turn off a few cards, possibly, in his hand. And at this point, I know I have a Block Dragon. I know I have a Gizmak Engrave. So I'm possibly looking, you know, how to get to a Dingirsu. Because uh, that'll do one of two things. That'll protect Nat Beast. And protect whatever link I'm going to try to bring out, whether it be Avermax or Appalooza as well. Um, so I'm, you see me looking at Avermax there, but I'm like, you know, maybe I could possibly get an Appalooza on board. Because Appalooza, I think, would be just more impactful at this point than, uh, you know, the um, 
the Abalus would be more impactful than the Abramax because I, I know I can get Dingirsu out. So it's just a matter of figuring out how I can get like a four or three material uh, Appaloosa. So you see me summon out Sabres and Block Dragon here to go for Appaloosa. That'll get me the four counters on it that I need. And then I just really need three Earths and Grave and that Gizmax got to go through and we're pretty much golden uh, because, you know, one of the big problems that you can have with Appaloosa is how fragile it can be on board if you have enough, you know, cards uh, to, you know, sort of bait negations with. Um, especially in a deck like Orcus, if you can just get a Galtea out, you know, and then get a Dingirsu, that's going to bait something out and then I can just run it over, right? That's, that'll drop down to 24, but having the Dingirsu there makes it a lot easier because it just won't die in the battle phase that easily. Um, so yeah, Dingirsu being very, very clutch here. A uh, good, you know, solid replacement in some cases for Avermax, where like, you can't get it on the board. Um, you don't have the Link Fodder to do so, like I had in this one, because I wanted to use all that Link Fodder to go into the Appaloosa. Um, so, yeah, he's going to start with Danger Snack, though. That'll discard a Nightmare, which I'm not too worried about. If he tries to use the Nightmare, I'm not going to let it go through. So, um, he's going to go for the Snack. Again, another Snack. So, we're going to knock another card out of his hand. It's going to be Foolish Burial, so... I find in this case it's pretty nice that I made him discard probably one of the best cards in his entire deck. Uh, simply because he couldn't use it because of Nat Beast. Um, so making him already make some sacrifices at this point just to try to deal with the board that I've created. He's going to start with Scrap Recycler. I'm debating on negating this, but um, I really still see no threat uh, in doing so. I, you just see me, you know, you know, grab the dice there. I'm thinking, you know, maybe, maybe this is something I want to stop. But I'm trying to think in his extra deck, like, what in his extra deck can he possibly make at this point that's going to hurt me? Um, you know, come, things that come to mind are like, um, you know, Zero Boros is obviously very dangerous. If Zero Boros hits the field, you know, uh, we're kind of in a bad spot. So I just need to keep him away from getting, it, like, enough material on board to go for a Zero Boros. Um, because obviously, you know, with the Nightmare Engrave and the Gizmak, like, he could, he possibly could get there, you know? Not a guarantee at this point with what he has to work with, but very much could get there. He's just a couple links away uh, to be able to get into the, the the almighty god card known as Zeroboros. Um, you know, can't get to Galate at this point because I'm not going to let him, right? If he tries to Nightmare, I'm, and you send Wand, and then Wand for Nightmare to make Galate. I'm not going to let him get that far. So he's going to need other extenders. Um, and this, you know, the Foolish Burial being one of those extenders, you know, he couldn't even use it in the first place. So he's going to try Nightmare. We're going to negate. And now at this point, uh, you know, the Appaloosa is at 24. So it's within range to get beat over by something. But again, that's where the Dingirsu comes in so clutch. So we're going to head into game two now. And I'm just one game away from securing a spot in the finals at my local mega tournament. So pretty ecstatic about that. I'd also like to mention that if you're interested in this playmat that I'm using or the beautiful uh, sapphire blue sleeves that I'm using uh, on my main deck or the uh, effect sleeves that I'm using on my extra deck, um, you can find all of that and more on Imperium Duelist's website down in the description below. You can also find a discount code to help you save 10% off your entire order. Help support me in the process on some amazing dice, uh, sleeves, deck boxes, things like that. So check them out down in the description below. So. Orcus, no surprise here, opting to go first, starting with the Allure of Darkness. Uh, what will he banish, though? That is the real question. Looks like it'll be a DD Crow. Now, uh, my friend here on the right has a, he, he pretty much plays triple DD Crow in every deck he ever plays, which is really infuriating to me, just because every time I've played against him, he's always had DD Crow in multiples, and it's just, it's just annoying. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it is what it is. Um, if you got the crow, you got the crow. But it looks like crow hasn't done much for him in this opening hand other than, you know, you know, allow for some sort of brick. Setting one looks like to be called by the grave uh, and is just going to pass, unfortunately. A very, very unlucky turn. But, you know, I'm looking at this as like an opportunity to start going full, you know, full steam ahead um, and just try to push through this board and try to secure the game as quickly as possible. And not allow for a game three at this point. So Foolish Burial starting off. Must be nice opening that one up, right? Uh, dumping Edgemp Sabres. Now, Edgemp is going to stack for cost. So I'm going to put that pesky o lion back into my hand because I'm trying to think, you know, if he does have something like Call by the Grave, uh, or in this case, another DD Crow. So like as soon as I see that Crow, it started, you know, pops up to my head. I'm like, okay, I should try to be maybe playing around Crow. But, you know, using Sabres to stack that o lion for cost 
uh, pretty much guarantees like if if the if the sabers doesn't come out, I can still normal uh, math man and try to dump O lion. It's just unfortunately that he also happened to have a call by the grave for the O lion, uh, preventing from getting that level three token on board from preventing Cherubini, you know, sending Rhino, sending you know whatever, uh, you know, to keep the plays going. So I'll just swing for fifteen, unfortunately, and just pass there. He's gonna pick up a copy of symbol skeleton for turn, setting an impermanence now and a symbol skeleton. Holding that impermanence last turn for a possible follow-up if I had anything after the math man. But, uh, you know, unfortunately for me, lucky for him, I didn't. But a draw Jackalope, which is kind of a saving grace. Would have liked to see Gallus, but, you know, Jackalope's sort of close enough. But he's going to American snipe that out of the hand. I'll be summoning out a Suchinoko. So, I have a Kamungus in my hand as well. Um, so, like, I see no real value you know in tributing over his set monster um so i'm just kind of holding it for fodder for a potential block dragon if i can get into one um which i actually think i have a block dragon in hand so cherubini is gonna hit the board now i'm i'm debating on what i want to do here i'm looking at graph and i'm looking at rhino warrior this is one of those times where i think it would have been better to send rhino warrior with uh you know the cherubini I don't always do that because if I don't need the extra earth, there's no reason in just sending Rhino Warrior for the hell of sending Rhino Warrior. Um, if I have sufficient earths in grave for, you know, a block dragon or two, uh, you know, whatever it might be, um, there's no reason. I'd rather just keep the Rhino Warrior in deck for the potential at being able to send other cards uh, like Edgem Sabers, um, you know, or Mali or whatever, it may, not Mali, uh, or Solkius if I was playing that build, you know what I mean? Like, it would just be an extra target or something like Farfa in the main deck you know something to look forward to milling later on so i decided to send the, just the graph here to summon the seer although i think looking back this is one of those situations where i wish i would have sent rhino warrior as well um and i make some like questionable plays here um brain must have been getting a bit fogged up at this point a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh being played already at this point you know four rounds of swiss a top eight and then top four i mean it's not terrible like this is no ycs or regional where it's like a literal marathon but you know we're, we're making do. We're, we're going through the motions here. He's got the impermanence, though, on the normal summon of Dotscaper, and that is going to cause the uh, the Seer to self-destruct. Now I'm going into a link here. I'm debating on to go for Phoenix or Cerberus. Would it be cool if I was also playing Mascarena, but that would be my 16th card in my extra deck. So I go for Phoenix. I don't know why I go for Phoenix. Maybe I'm worried about a set Ash Blossom or something. Because if I would have gone for Cerberus, um, you know, I could have summoned this Block Dragon banished everything you know all the earths that i have including that dot scaper to summon out. I, I, I could make curious right here um but i just don't see that line i guess so it just kind of goes unnoticed and i just go for the phoenix for more damage um so phoenix runs over the uh the symbol no problem and then the block dragon swinging in for an additional 24 or 25 so at that point this is where i would have that follow-up like i would have you know, the curious follow-up, you know, dump maybe Glow Bulb or Giant Rex to the graveyard, whatever it may be, whatever I really fancy uh, in this particular situation. But instead, I link everything into an Appaloosa with three materials um, and uh, get some counters on board for the somewhat simplified game state. And I pass it back to him. And uh, he's going to draw an orchestrated babble for turn, which isn't terrible, right? But uh, you, need, you need Orcus plays. You need something on board to make plays with. Um, and he does not have that right now. Looks like he has two copies of Orca's Nightmare in his hand and a Babel. So there's really not much he can do there. Um, even if he would have top decked the Scrap Recycler, it's just going to get negated. And, you know, he's drawing Monster Reborn for next turn, but he's not going to live to see the next turn. Um, at least I'm not going to let him anyway. So I'm just going to, like, put, like, uh, Gigantes on board in this normal Dyna and just play the beatdown game. And that's pretty much going to be it. Um, but yeah. That's going to do it for this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, Block Dragon BA uh, taking the top four win. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Reminder, charity live stream on the 9th. More info about that down in the description below. But yeah, so as you guys, winner kills, sending out. We'll see you guys in the next one.